Hey there, thank you for tuning back in again. And hopefully today will be the final wrap up on the Duplicator i3. As I've said before, I'm happy with this machine and I mentioned in my previous video that I'm quite happy to show you guys how to swap out a noisy fan in here. So I have had a request to do that. So I'm going to show you that today. When I mentioned this to the guys at 3 dprintingstore.coza, they were quick to get me another fan so that I could actually do the swap out. Firstly, show you guys how to do that. So if you had that problem, you could do it yourself. Or alternatively, just see what's involved with getting into one of these machines. So before I get on with that, let me just take care of a few things that you should pay attention to when you are working with sensitive electronic equipment. I've got a anti-static clip, like a crocodile clip. It's actually attached to my leg and I'll be earthing that under the desk to a earthing point that I've got here, just to make sure I don't damage the sensitive electronics inside here. Okay, so you hear what fan noise I'm talking about that usually starts up and then a few minutes afterwards it quiets down. Listening to that fan noise, it's either the fan itself or it might actually just be one of the wires inside the chassis of this that's fouling up on there. That's very easy to happen in transit. Either way, we're gonna open this up, have a look inside and get that sorted out. Now, right, like I said before, before you start, take the power out. You don't want um, mains electricity in here while you're working inside the box. The other thing worth mentioning, the fan is a 24 volt fan. This thing has 24 volt power inside, so don't put a 12 volt fan in here. All right, so close up of the machine. First thing I see is there are six bolts on the bottom. I'm gonna start by taking those out. All right. Okay, so. Man, that's quite nice. So there you go. That's the power supply. This is mains in. When this thing is plugged in, this is all live and that runs through to here. So you definitely don't want to be touching anything down here or anything on here. Those are open and live wires and that over there can kill you. So you do need to be careful of that. What we are going to be working on is over here. The first thing I can see is that the fan header over here is actually glued onto the board so it doesn't come loose. That is one of those measures that they, they'll take in the factory when they build these to make sure things don't come apart and fall apart during shipping. You know, these things get stuck in containers on ships, rough seas, etc., etc., and they don't want these things to come apart during that time. So I've taken the cover off. I'm now just taking the two screws out that hold the fan in place, like that. And you'll notice there are two washers there are two washers here on this cover, which is just spaces to actually keep the fan off the chassis and not so much to keep vibration out, it's just to keep the fan out of the way. And you should also take note of the way that the fan is mounted on the chassis. Is it 
mounted up, bringing air in, or is it mounted down, taking air out? Anyway, let's see. Now, what you can do is, if you get a fan with the exact same plug as this, you can actually pull off all the hot glue here and get that connector out. I've actually cleared the glue off the top here. So all that's left to do is pull out this fan. It did have some hot glue, which I had to pry away there. And um, get the other fan that came with it. Put it all back together again. And that should take care of it. So this fan has a two pin plug, which you can see there. That's gonna plug straight in here. If you don't get one with exactly the same wiring on here, you can actually cut that off and get another fan to put on here. The one fan that I've got actually has got the third cable on and a different plug on there. I can show you, and I probably will show you in a bit now, how to cut that off and replace it with another fan and that will work just as well. So you can see the two different connectors here. One's got two and one's got three. We don't need the yellow wire. So I'm simply just going to cut that off close to the fan so it doesn't get in the way of anything. And after that, I'm gonna more or less measure the two wires out to get it a similar length, cut them both off together. Move that out of the way. And now all that's required is to splice these two together, obviously red to red, black to black. Separate them out. And you're going to see that I'm gonna separate the one side a little bit longer than the other side in a minute because I need to put some heat shrink on. So I'm gonna start off by just stripping away some of the insulation to expose the wires that I need to join together. And unfortunately, I moved out of the way of the camera a bit here. And there you can see I've actually just lengthened them up a bit. Because the other thing I need to do is put some heat shrink over them to seal them and to insulate them afterwards. So I'm just going to cut some heat shrink. Just two short pieces. And I'm now going to slide those over the two wires. And you can see that I actually move it back quite a bit because I don't want the heat from soldering to shrink the heat shrink at this point yet. I twist the wires over each other so that they actually coil around each other giving me a nice flat join which takes to solder well and is actually quite strong. Okay, there you can see a close-up of them just as they are. The soldering iron is hot. I'm just going to check that it's warm enough. And I'm going to apply as little heat as possible to get the solder into the wire and to get it to actually soak all the way through the wire. Just neaten that up a bit. And there you can see I just tug on it lightly just to make sure that it's nice and strong. And you can see there the heat shrink slides over it nicely. I'm going to use a heat gun, just warm it slightly, and you can see how the heat shrink just shrinks into place. And that's insulated the wire and actually joined it together. So with that done, mount the fan back on the chassis. And those are the two original washers that came with it. I'm going to replace them with slightly smaller washers and I'm going to double up just to keep it away from the chassis just so that it doesn't rub in case that's what's doing it. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting two washers over one of the screws and I'm just aligning it over the screw holes so it's easy for me to get them in place. You can see them doing it again just to line them up. Then the second screw in and it goes in quite easily and sits in place. That goes off and you can see there there's quite a bit of a gap between it 
just to hold it nicely and out of the way. Well, if there are no wires inside here, they actually foul the fan. And looks like it's clear. All right, so that in and then just the screws at the bottom. With it all closed up, that in. So there you have it, job done. Six screws underneath, two screws in the fan, comes loose with the Allen key that's in the bag that comes with the printer so you don't need any extra tools. Really, really an easy job to do. All right, so here we've got some of the prints of this machine. You can see there, this is quite nice. It's got the facets of the STL file as it moves around. So you can see the print is quite accurate. Uh, the walls are nice and straight. Some of the other prints, I printed a whole lot of these that I've been giving away as, as gifts and stuff like that just to get a whole lot of them out uh, in different colors. And here's another one of those. What I'm gonna show you now is just some of the Z scarring as it, as it runs up the side. And you can see there as I'm pointing to it, it's a bit of scarring, but it's not what I wouldn't expect from many printers. This print here, uh, was when I printed at very high speed. This was done at about 100 plus millimeters a second. And you can see there that quality has actually dropped quite a bit. But it's like I said in one of the previous videos, it's not bad enough to say, oh, this is a horrible print. It's not great. I wouldn't probably print at that sort of speed on an ongoing basis. But again, it's not a horrible print. Here's, uh, I think it's called Dead Man Door Stop. Uh, again, you can see the facets. This is printed nearly solid. And if you look there at the bottom right hand corner is actually a mark when I tried to pull it off the bed of how well it's stuck to the bed to get it off. Here's the, the castle with a staircase going up on the inside. And again, you can see how nice and shiny the exterior is. It's all nice and straight. And there's a close up where you can actually see the layers the DNA coil going up the inside and the staircase going down. As you can see, it's a, it's a very nice clean print. There is some spider webs between them. That's a little bit of retraction tuning. Um, I left the print exactly as it is, no cleanup, just to show you warts and all exactly how it is. At the top, you can see there's very, very little drooping on the overhang. And even underneath there, you can also see very very little drooping it actually bridged quite nicely over that this is a torture test and you can see here you know this is quite a hard print to to get right it's not something I wouldn't expect the the sort of marks and stuff on here there is a little bit of drooping if you look here a little bit close up you can see where the underside does droop a little bit but like I said this is a hard print for any printer to get right. So this is once again very very close up and you can see very very fine details. With that done I'm gonna call this a success and I'm gonna say that this print is probably gonna work for years and years to come. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like you to subscribe, share this with your friends, but now that this print is working I'm gonna go make something and so should you. Goodbye.